How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. This is Mike doing my first video of the year 2024. So let me wish all of you a belated Happy New Year. I always tend to hibernate and get very quiet and reclusive around the holidays. A little bit of a retreat, you know, for the new year. And uh, so now I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. Let me start off by showing you what I picked up recently. I haven't bought too much actually. I uh, got a nice little package from creepyclassics.com and two of these Blu-ray packages are double features and they're all upgrades. So the double dipping continues into the new year. I keep saying I'm not going to do it anymore but I seem to be doing it more often. So, alright. So first of all, I've heard so many people talking about these I just had to get them. I got this double feature of the giant Gila monster and the Killer Shrews, both from the year 1959. These were released on a double uh, double feature back during the day. I think they were they probably started out at drive-ins. I'm not sure, but I, I have DVD copies of these. Actually, two of the Giant Gila Monster, and so I thought I would get this. It's lo they're loaded with extra features, interviews, commentaries. Uh, we have a nice little booklet. Okay. And um, anyway, I haven't watched The Killer Shrews as yet, but I did watch part of The Giant Gila Monster, and it looks really good. So uh, it's amazing what they can do with these lower-than-low-budget films, which these, these, are, these are cool to watch, but they're certainly not high-quality science fiction slash horror movies. But yeah, loads of fun, all right? So the other upgrade is The Terror. Roger Corman starring Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson uh, double featured with the little shop little shop of horrors from 1960 another Roger Corman classic and uh, I had not seen the little shop of horrors for a very long time and I watched it the other night laughed my ass off I had forgotten just how funny this movie is and it looks great in fact both of the films look really good I, there have been so many bad copies of the terror floating around forever, way back since the VHS days. And I've ne I never saw it in the theater, so I never saw it in really good condition. This is the best I've ever seen it. Uh, the colors come out beautifully. And, um, yeah, so, let's see. Nice little booklet with uh, good artwork. Starts out with an article about Boris Karloff. So, um, yeah. But I have to admit, I, I just had a great time watching The Little Shop of Horrors. And I like this movie better than the music remake, which is a lot of fun. But this is incredible. I've forgotten how funny it was. Uh, Mel Wells, Jonathan Hayes, Dick Miller, Jackie Joseph, and Jack Nicholson. Okay, as the guy who loves pain in the dentist's office, uh, one of his earliest roles, just a classic film. All right, so I picked up another horror film that I had never seen before called Horrors of the Black Museum. And uh, this stars Michael Goff in a film produced by Herman Cohen, who also directed Michael Goff in The Black Zoo, and I think he did some other things as well. Um, Michael Goff plays a writer of mystery stories who is also a mad killer looking for um, ideas for his books. The story is actually kind of crazy. It's very predictable. But what, what gets this into a sort of classic status is the performance of Michael Goff, which is so way over dramatic. He plays this like it's Macbeth. It's wonderful. And uh, one of the lead actresses is Shirley Ann Field great English actress who passed away just a few weeks ago. Beautiful lady, good actress. <clears throat> and she also plays her part so overdramatically. I think she was trying to match Michael Goff's performance or something. But uh, yeah, this is very cool. Let's see. Has a reversible cover. Let's see the other one, which is the poster. Okay. And of course, there's a little uh, intro about hip, uh, Hypno Vista, not Hypnovision, Hypno Vista, which is just uh, hypnosis. And it's kind of cool. But lots of extra features as well commentaries, interviews, all sorts of cool stuff. 
And finally, in that same package, I got this movie called Red Planet Mars from 1953. This is a bare bones release starring Peter Graves and Andrea King. And it, I thought it was going to be a science fiction movie from the title, obviously. But uh, it's about a scientist played by Peter Graves, assisted by his wife, Andrea King. They believe they are getting messages from the planet Mars, which they are trying to translate using, um, you know, scientific language, pi and all this sort of thing, and which I don't even begin to understand. They start getting these uh, philosophical messages. And as it turns out, there was someone in within the Soviet Union who is also getting these messages and manipulating them for Peter Graves and his wife to make them seem like there's something else. So it ties in with the, the Cold War, uh, the threat of nuclear war and all that sort of thing. And uh, it, it really is not a science fiction movie. It's very philosophical, it's very religious. And I thought I had never seen this before. Then I got to one scene, one specific scene and I remembered every detail. So obviously I have seen this on TV way, way back in the day. But uh, this is a bare bones release. There's nothing on here. No scene selection, nothing. But a uh, pretty good little movie. Uh, not what I was expecting. I was expecting science fiction. And the only tie-in with science fiction is they're talking about Mars, right? You don't see anything of Mars just on a TV screen. It's sort of a map. And that's about it. So that's what I got from Creepy Classics. I picked up a film at Big Lots a few weeks ago that uh, I'd never heard of before, and I, I, I recommend it with certain reservations. It's called The Leisure Seeker, starring Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland. This is from 2018, and um, I don't know how this did at the box office because I, I had never heard of this before, but they, they play a married couple, they're married happily for years, they have children, and the husband is suffering from uh, increasing dementia, but he can still drive. So they decide to take off in their 1975 Winnebago, which they had back when they were very young. It's been sitting in the garage. And they take off on a road trip without telling anybody. Decide to go back to some places that they remember from their younger days where they were happy. And in a way, you think it's going to be a typical road trip movie, but it, it takes a lot of twists and turns. And I don't necessarily like the way the plot turns out, some of the details, but um, the acting by these two and the chemistry between these two great, great actors is just wonderful. Hel Helen Mirren is a treasure. I just adore her. She can do anything. And they work very well together. So uh, good movie. I, you know, five bucks, I'm happy. So that's my uh, film update. Let me show you what I got for Christmas from my good friend Jordan Thompson, um, who uh, has a YouTube channel, Ridley Cinema, which he never uses. So let's encourage Jordan to get busy on YouTube. He sent me this terrific book, terrific book called Star Trek Cats, right? Is that cool or what? Jordan knows that I am a, a Trekkie and uh, he just, I don't know where he found this, but here's the back cover. This is by a woman named Jenny Parks. And as it turns out, she she is not just an artist, but she has a degree in scientific illustration. I didn't even know there was a degree in scientific illustration. But as a side hustle, she likes to draw animals. And she's been doing a series of uh, animals as pop culture characters. So she does all this with the Star Trek original series cast, right? Each one of them disguised as a cat. And every one of the, the illustrations in here is from a, an episode of Star Trek, the original series, with a quote and different characters as cats playing those parts, right? The artwork is just absolutely terrific. Here is Kirk and Spock, or here are Kirk and Spock, doing the chess game. Remember that? Which is really... <laughs> oh, and here is uh, Uhura and Spock, where she's singing to him, remember? So, uh, yeah. And let's see, there's one here I wanted to show you. 
Okay, here's here's Dr. McCoy. He's dead, Jim. So, <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know this existed until I got it in the mail from Jordan. So thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, very creative idea for a gift, and I appreciate it. And finally, this is just for fun. I have a movie quiz, not necessarily for all of you, because I know that this list of 20 classic films that all the people who are going to be watching this video, you all know these movies, you've seen them many times, and you probably own them, you have them on your shelves. I, I made this list for my sister, who is three years older than me, that means she's 75, and her uh, adult daughter, who was in her mid-40s, and her, uh, her husband, who was also in the mid-40s. And I wanted to give them a quiz when we had our family Christmas dinner. And I wanted to ask how many of these films that they've actually seen. I, just as a, a point for me to, to know where their heads are at as far as cinema. Because they know that I'm a film freak. They've seen my movie room and their, their reaction is usually, oh my God. And uh, I just wanted to know what they, well, how it worked out. So here's the list. So Citizen Kane, Casablanca, Dark Victory, Vertigo, Eight and a Half, Frankenstein, the original, uh, Dracula, the original, The Maltese Falcon, The Best Years of Our Lives, 1946, This Gun for Hire, 1942, The Big Sleep, 1946, The Lost Weekend, 1945, To Have and Have Not, 1945, uh, Notorious, which I didn't write the date down, this what, 1947, Psycho, 1960, a Star is Born, 1954, the Judy Garland version. Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, The Innocence, 1961, Out of the Past, 1947. And I put in one side of the film, which also has Chaplin, uh, The Great Dictator from 1940. So I wanted to know how many of them they have seen. And you can probably guess the results. My, my niece and nephew, well, my niece and her husband have... Um, heard of a lot of these films, but the only one they know they have seen is Psycho. And I, I guess I wasn't terribly surprised, but a little bit disappointed, I guess, that they hadn't seen more of these. And my sister, I know she's seen a few of these because I've, I, I was actually in the theater with her on the same day in 1961. We both saw The Innocents with Deborah Carr. And I'm sure she's seen a few of these on TV, like A Star is Born. But, uh, she didn't know that much about these. And the reason I wanted to ask is because all three of them are, are college educated. They all have all have degrees, which I do not have. I just have two years of college. And I always thought that people, when they were in college, they they explored the cinema. And they, they had a curiosity about foreign films and obscure movies. And, and because when I moved here to Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, where we have the University of Illinois, I was only 22 years old and I was hanging out on campus all the time and they had all these film societies where you could see classic films and foreign films every weekend and that's how I got to see a lot of these things. The first time I saw Eight and a Half was in a classroom uh, at the University of Illinois. So I assume that most college kids were curious about the cinema and I guess I was wrong. So in a way I'm disappointed and uh, I kind of give up, you know, thinking that younger people are going to just um, seek all this stuff out. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's still hope. Anyway, that's my movie quiz. So how many of these have you seen, right? Come on, guys, tell me. Um, anyway, that's my first video. Uh, already kept you too long. Thank you for watching, and I hope to uh, get busy in the new year and be around a little bit more. Uh, comments are welcome. Take care, folks.